so here I am in Revit 2016. We're going to go ahead and start the creation of our custom tapered moment frame. Um, here in the recent files window and under the families portion, there is an icon for clicking new. When I do this, the new family select template file window will display. We'll scroll down and we'll pick structural column as a starting point. We'll click open and start our file creation. We'll go ahead and save this file as tapered moment frame. And now we can begin the process of creating the skeleton reference plane framework. I'm here in the lower level reference floor plan view. And I want to go ahead and start off by creating some basic dimensions to help us with the overall length of the tapered moment frame and the width. I head over to the annotate tab and use the align command. There is a keyboard shortcut called DI and that is used uh, if you want to just make your life a little faster and easier. I'll place a dimension horizontal one and I'll place a vertical one. Now, because our tapered moment frame needs to be somewhat large, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this out by left-clicking and holding and get it to a rough number that I want. These other horizontal reference planes, we want to select and drag and move out so that the ends of the lines of the reference plane lines are where we need them to be. If you select a reference plane that is pinned down like this, uh, that's uh, to help you understand that that's supposed to stay in place. If I unpin it, I can make modifications and adjustments. So for the sake of pulling the ends, we'll unpin it. We'll do that, and then once you've adjusted it the way you want, you want to pin it back down. We'll go ahead and make the adjustments for these as well. And also, if you notice, as I'm pushing and pulling the ends, when you get to the very end, they'll line up to other reference planes, and it'll help you with the alignment perspective. Let's go ahead and move these dimensions out of the way for now and we'll work with them a little later. We'll do the last one down here. And before we continue with creating additional reference planes for the skeleton system, just so that you're aware, in the datum panel of the Create tab of the ribbon, there is a command for reference plane and a command for reference line. There is a distinction between the two a reference line actually is solid green line. It has a definitive start and a definitive end. If you select it, the ends are solid grip dots that you can click and pull. However, with a reference plane, the line work is dashed, and when you select it, it's an open circle on either end. With a reference plane, there is no definitive end on either side. It actually goes to infinity to the to either sides, whether it's horizontal or vertical. What's the difference and why do we use one versus the other? A reference line can be used for the sake of creating an angle parameter and having an object hosted on that reference line. And when the angle is adjusted, the reference line will physically move and therefore move the object. A simple example would be, say, the leaf of a door being hosted and sitting on this reference line. And if I change the angle, that reference line moves, and therefore the leaf of the door moves. And thus, you can create a door that has a swing angle. So back to continuing with creating the reference planes. 
we'll go ahead and zoom in here and create a couple more reference planes for the beam width. So I'll click reference plane. By the way, the reference plane command and most commands actually have keyboard shortcuts. And if you want to know what they are, just leave your mouse on the command and a tooltip will pop up and give you the name of the command and the actual keyboard shortcut in parentheses. I'm going to click reference plane and there is a draw method with two uh, line method with two clicks and a pick line method. If I use the line method, I can click wherever I want, drag my mouse, and place it. Now I'm going to purposely not place it so it's dead aligned. I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to use the other method, pick line. When you use this method, you can use an offset feature, and I'll just say some value like six inches for now. And when you put your mouse over an object, you'll see that the dashed line um, will pop up. And that dashed line is to let you know where the new reference plane will be created. So I'm going to click there. The difference between the two is that if you use the pick line method, the new reference plane will be identical to the source object that you're working with. And therefore, the ends will align by default. Whereas this one, where we use the line method and graphically clicked twice, the ends may or may not be aligned properly. We'll go ahead and place a dimension for the beam width. And in this situation, we want the condition of the width to be equal from the center. So I'm going to click this EQ symbol and make it equal, equal. And then I'll create an overall dimension here. I'm not going to worry about parameterizing the dimensions and giving them intelligence yet. That's actually going to be coming up in the next set of clips. And so from a floor plan perspective, this is what we have to work with. Again, when you're always working in any software, whether it's AutoCAD or Revit or any other applications, save often. So I'm going to hit Save. And then we're going to continue with creating additional um, reference planes. I'm going to head over to the front elevation. From the front elevation, you're going to notice there are two levels created by default for you. Level uh, 0, lower reference level and an upper reference level at nine feet. Typically when I'm designing and creating new families, I like to move these datums out of the way. The reason being there may be a reference plane lying underneath. Some of these reference planes you can unpin or unlock so you can adjust them like we did earlier in the plan view. In this one, we cannot. So I'm going to click Cancel. And then I'm going to create a new reference plane for that lower level, like so. I'll also create one for the upper level. And in this case, I'm going to lock it. The reason we're going to lock this reference plane is so that it is aligned to this reference level. So should this reference level height change, for example, 13, that horizontal reference plane will move with it. When we're working with creating reference planes in the skeleton system, we always want to try to ensure that you have nice, clean intersections. Why? So that way, when you're getting down to creating the geometry of the actual family, you have intersections that you can actually click to. So now that we've created a couple more reference planes from that perspective, let's head over to the left side of the custom tapered moment and the column here, and then we'll look at it from this perspective. So I'll create a couple more reference planes that represents the bottom and then the top and I'm going to physically move this over to make it a little larger. Again, try as much as you can to make things aligned as evenly as you can.
It just makes your life a lot easier down the road. Since we're making identical columns on the left and the right hand side, I can use the mirror command, which is located here in the modify panel of the contextual tab. I'm actually going to use the pick access method instead of the draw method. The pick access method allows me to click an object and it physically mirrors the other object across. We want to also create a couple more reference planes that represents the knee height and the mid height of the tapered moment uh, frame. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use DI as the keyboard shortcut for creating a dimension from here to here, just so we get an overall. I'll create reference planes for the knee height. and then one for the mid-height. I'll place dimensions for the knee height and dimensions for the mid-height. Lastly, we want to go through the process of creating two reference planes that are at an angle that represents the top part of the tapered moment frame. So again, using the keyboard shortcut RP, I'll click this intersection and draw out here roughly five or six degrees. Again, moving this up to have a nice clean intersection and then mirroring the reference plane we just created. One of the most basic things we also focus in on when creating the skeleton system is the naming conventions of all of your reference planes. You always want to take the reference planes that you've created and give them names because it makes your life a lot easier down the road when you start using commands like extrude, blend, sweep, so on and so forth, different types of Boolean operations. All right. So if we take a look, this one is already set for left. This one is set for right. This one is set for center left right. This one that we created for the knee height doesn't have one. If you're running uh, Revit 2016 R2, you'll notice that you can actually click where it says click to name and give it a name. If you don't have R2 installed, you have to select the reference plane and go over here under the instance property where it says name, click inside here and give it what you want. And then the ones that we created at an angle don't have names either. So I'm just gonna do something as simple as saying angle RP. And the top one we created also did not have a name. And for the sake of speed, we're not gonna worry about naming the short vertical reference planes that we created earlier. And so with that, we've gone ahead and created the reference planes that define the skeleton system. In the next clip, we're gonna focus in on setting up dimensions and parameterizing those dimensions so that there's intelligence, which leads to being able to flex and adjust the skeleton system properly without even introducing physical geometry yet.